What's up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls around the world? I would like to welcome you back to the Real Talk with Zuby podcast. On today's episode, I'm very excited to be speaking to the founder of Rugged Legacy Men's Grooming Company. This is Jeff Putnam. He is a very interesting guy. He is also the father, a father of nine. You heard that right, nine children right there. So we've got a whole bunch of interesting stuff we're going to talk about. Welcome to the show, Jeff. How are you doing? Hey, thanks for having me on, man. I'm doing good. That's all good, man. So for anyone who uh, can't see the screen right now, if you're just listening back to the podcast, Jeff is here. He's, uh, he's here. He's got a, got a very powerful looking beard. He's smoking a pipe. And uh, it's, not, it's not common for me to feel sort of, you know, out masculine, but I'm kind of feeling <laughs> like I need, to, I need to step it up right now. My beard needs uh, several more inches and I need to father nine more children and, you know, I don't know what else. Yeah, man. <laughs> so yeah, man, tell us a little bit about yourself, bro. Well, uh, originally from South Carolina, spent a little bit of time getting into a whole lot of trouble throughout my teenage years. Okay. <laughs> Made a bit of a mess of things, but that's just my Southern blood, I guess. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, I was that 15 year old kid that was stealing cars to go play pool at 2 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, I mean, that was me. I was a 15 year old stealing my uncle's car to drive I don't know, 20 miles away to a pool hall to get into a fight with a bunch of 26 year olds. So oh, wow. did you win? Not all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that doesn't, that doesn't sound like a good fight to get into as a 15 year old, to be fair. No, nah, it wasn't. I okay. mean, I, I'm right now I'm walking around at about one fifty ish and I barely break five, eight. So <laughs> <laughs> at 15, it was worse. Not fair enough, man. So what's, what prompted that? I mean, what were you getting into fights about? How did, how did, what led you even to that stage or? I don't know, man. It was pretty much just anything, you know, just, Oh really? You want to look at me that way? Huh? Okay. <laughs> just <laughs> stupid teenage stuff, you know, thinking your balls are bigger than they are. <laughs> Fair enough, man. So uh, you grew up in South Carolina and that's where you're still based, right? Yeah. Lived out West in West Texas for a little bit, but, I got really tired of the desert. Mm. And what uh, what kind of family are you from? Are you from from a big family? I know you've got a big family. Are you are you from one as well? Well, kind of. Um, my old man died about thirty years ago. I was just a kid before I even started school. Mm. And uh, <clears throat> excuse me, my mom remarried the same year to a guy who had three kids that were grown. It was just me and my little brother. Mm. We didn't get along all that well. My uh, stepfather and I was he liked to throw a lot of hands so okay. right about age 12 I threw hands back and that pretty much ended all of that and my mom put me up for adoption yeah when you were 12 <laughs> when I was 12 okay okay so this this already sounds like it's explaining some of the stuff you've already told me a little bit better I always like to dig in a little bit and find out you know people's journey and their their personal path because I find that once you get into it a little bit more, stuff tends to make more sense. Yeah, to me, it's, you know, kind of a blase thing to kind of just brush over. But I guess to others, it's a little more interesting. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think everyone's own life is kind of mundane to them because you lived it and it's the only life you've lived. So it's like me, you know, people are like, oh, what was it like growing up in Saudi Arabia? Or what was this? And I'm like, yeah, it was cool. You know, like. <laughs> it's very easy to understand it. I mean, I mean, everyone grew up with like 47 Lambos parked on the street, so it's no big deal. <laughs> I used to tell people in school that I used to ride it, ride a camel and stuff, and everybody believed me. Yeah, I've got a buddy at work who was uh, from Egypt. Okay. And when, he, and when he was going to college to get his engineering degree, <laughs> he told everybody in the class that he took three camels and had to... Uh, uh, stow away on a ship just to get to America. <laughs> People will believe pretty much anything. It's brilliant. Oh yeah. It's probably, it might be harder now with the, actually, I was going to say it might be harder now with the internet, but looking at some of the stuff I see on Twitter, I don't know about that. I don't think that lack of access to information was ever the problem. Nope. Certainly isn't. <laughs> so, uh, so let's carry on from, from where we were. So you said when you were in your mid teens, you know, you were, aggressive, getting into a lot of trouble, stuff like that. So let's continue on from there. Um, you're obviously not that, uh, that man now. 
So tell us what happened. Well, uh, I'm not that kid now, but mm. <laughs> uh, I'm still hyper aggressive. That I have, to tone down. <laughs> I have to tone it down a lot. I take everything as a challenge, and I'm like, no, these are these are normal people. You can't do that. But um, if you talk to Roman McClay, he'd tell you it was in my southern blood. My DNA told me to do that. So, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, things kind of mellowed out as I got <clears throat> further along into high school. And realize that here in the South, they grow them a lot bigger than I was. So you can only pick so many fights before you get tired of getting your head bashed in. Yeah. But, uh, excuse me. <clears throat> but, um, no, I met my wife right out of high school. And next thing you know, baby started coming. About five kids later, we got married. <laughs> The order of that just amused me. <laughs> yeah. So how, how old were you when you had your first kid? I was just barely at, barely over 18, a little less than 19, I guess. Okay. And uh, you met your now wife when you were in high school or as soon as you left? After. Okay. And um, wow. So... <laughs> that, poor, that poor woman has been pregnant for 20 years. <laughs> I'm trying to think, think of where to go from here. So how, how, old are your, how old are your kids now? So you've got nine kids. What's the sort of age breakdown and what's the boy well, girl? The, old, the, oldest is tw the oldest is 20. The youngest is four. Okay. And there's only one girl. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. And where is she in the, in the birth order? Second to last. Oh, wow. Man. So she has seven older brothers. Wow. I was going to say, God be with any man who wants to uh, date her. <laughs> Good grief. Absolutely. <laughs> wow. Ah, seven older. Dude, that's mad. Can you, can you imagine showing up to that house when you dude, were? Dude, man. That's, that's scary. That's just yeah. like. You've got a guy that looks like me answering the door. And then you're like, <laughs> okay, this is pretty bad. And then you walk into the house and there's just seven other dudes. <laughs> oh my gosh wow yeah that's intense well i guess you know any guy who uh any guy who shows up is, is serious because uh <laughs> like, and anyone anyone who's not serious you just be like nah, it's not not e not even worth the effort let me let me let me uh stay away from that that's not that's not gonna hey, go well he just poke his head in the door and just nah <laughs> yeah <laughs> just, just, just not worth it just oh uh, uh, did you guys order the uber no okay <laughs> Just change your story. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, man. So, so tell me what that's like, man. I mean, that's, um, that in itself being, being a father of nine is, um, is pretty, pretty phenomenal, especially in this day and age. That's very, that's very rare. That's very rare. Um, that's one of the highest kid counts that I'm aware of. Um, not the highest, but definitely one of them. So how do you manage it? I mean, what's your, I don't even know exactly what question to ask because I feel like I have so many. Well, I drink a lot. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, a lot of people make it oh, seem harder than it is because there's such a, a wide range. You know, the two oldest are grown and moved out and they're living halfway across the country now in college. Yeah. But which, once you have teenagers, they, they're kind of self-reliant. So you don't really have to worry about them as much. And basically, it's only like having four kids at a time, depending on which one is not in their room. Gotcha. So it's not really that bad. Okay. You know, I still get the 4 a.m. text from the 20-year-old. Uh, Dad, I need 50 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and, and when you, so I guess if you can rewind back to when you were 18, I mean, you, it sounds like there wasn't a big gap between being that rambunctious, aggressive 15 or 16 year old who was getting into fights and getting into trouble and doing all that to becoming a father. Is that the thing that, is that the thing that caused the change? Would you say? Uh, I would guess so. I mean, I didn't have a dad, you know, he died yeah. and I the only memories I actually have of him involve, you know, a oxygen cannula and a hospital bed and a funeral. Mm. But, uh, once I had my own, I was like, well, I'm going to give mine something I didn't have. So, yeah. And besides that, I'd already done all my college partying before I even got out of ninth grade. So. 
<laughs> That's fair enough, man. I mean, that must have been a, a big shift, though, because, again, even becoming a father at 18, again, especially in this day and age, that's uh, not unheard of, but it's, it's, certainly, it's certainly rare. And it's something that uh, I think would scare most 18-year-olds or even people who are older and who are thinking back to being 18 and are like, oh, gosh, I would not have been, a, I would not have been, been ready for that. But it sounds like you obviously took to it and kept on going. Well, I think it kind of goes hand in hand with me being unable – physically and metaphysically unable to back down from a challenge. Mm. So, you know, if there's the biggest challenge out there is to be a good dad. So I'm like, well, can't run from this. Cause I wasn't running from a group of 26 year olds at age 15. So being a dad, wasn't going to be something I ran from. Okay. And in terms of the, uh, the work that you do, I mean, how have you, how have you managed that? How, what work were you, what's been your sort of pathway throughout your career. So I know you've got your, I know you've got your grooming company. I believe you've got another company as well. Is that right? Yep. The unemployables. Uh, it's okay. actually uh, ran by me, Nick Lowry, which you know him of ground shark coffee mm -hmm. and uh, Daniel Cosmala of are we watches. Okay. And also uh, I think sunburnt media marketing. Okay. And what's that all about? Well, the unemployables is uh it's basically a coaching slash mentorship uh, deal for business owners and up and coming entrepreneurs. What we do is we take everything that we've struggled through and everything that we've had to learn the hard way and we teach it to those who are on that same path. Uh, we pull in successful entrepreneurs. We have them on our podcast and then about a week later, we'll have them on for a live Q and a with the members of the unemployables because it is a subscription service mm -hmm. and uh, they'll be able to get firsthand knowledge from these guys who've been in the trenches and gotten where they want to be. And also the failed entrepreneurs that we have on that will go through and say, Hey, look, this is what didn't work. This is what you can't do. Uh, this is what I tried and failed. Cause I think, you, you know, seeing both sides of that is something that a lot of entrepreneurs don't and you get that, uh, what's the word success bias mm -hmm. or confirmation bias maybe yeah yeah where everybody's like well Survivor, this guy did survivorship it. Survivorship bias survivorship bias that's yeah. it and so we decided we started all our all three of us started our businesses from absolutely nothing and we're still on our way up we're nowhere near the level we want to be but we can bring some other people along because there's no better feeling than watching other people succeed mm. That's awesome, man. And when did he, when did you start the grooming company? What's been the, what was the timeline? I'm, what I'm trying to do is sort of create a timeline in my, in my brain here. Cause I feel like it's got some, got some big gaps between <laughs> being 18 and to being where we are now. So I'm quite interested to sort of fill in that timeline. I started rugged legacy grooming supply company in January of this year. Okay. So that's new. Yeah. And the unemployables we started May 1st. Okay. And what's been um, your career journey before that and including that? Oh, I've done everything. Um, <laughs> <laughs> everything from fast food to call centers to construction to just hard manual labor. Okay. Uh, been a whole lot of ups and downs between being homeless and that's hard to do when you've got a family, by the way. <laughs> Dude, tell, tell us about that, man. That's not something to gloss over. Yeah, well, things just kind of got a little financially strained, of course, like it always does when people start to fall into that. Uh, I guess you can call it a niche of homelessness. Uh, bills start getting spread out a little further and things start getting cut off and disconnected. And eventually we ended up living in a hotel, me, my wife, five of our kids, her pregnant. Mm. And... At one point in time, I was working for a uh, work today, get paid today uh, kind of place. Okay. And I was walking. We were living in West Texas. I was walking to work from work. And my job for this construction company was to take an 18-pound sledgehammer and break up the concrete chunks that were left over by the uh, jackhammer and were left over by the uh, the breaker bit that was on the end of the bobcat. Mm-hmm. 
just to bust them up small enough to throw into a hopper that would crush it up so it can be reused. And I was making about $56 a day working 10 hours a day doing that. Wow. So. And did that. Yeah. (laughs) Sorry, carry on. And I did that for about two years. Just trying to keep us from being on the street completely. Mm. So. Eventually that kind of graduated into me becoming a project superintendent with that company. Okay. But then of course that put me on the road, put me being on the road all the time, kind of put a strain on my relationship with my wife, my kids. So I had to leave that and fall right back into the same kind of grind again. Mm. And eventually I said the hell with it. <clears throat> my wife had the idea, well, just go home try to find something there and come back and get us. Okay. So that's what we, that's what we did about six years ago now. Okay. So you moved back to South Carolina. Yeah. Moved back to South Carolina in April of 2014. Just Get you the, or your whole family? That was just me. Okay. My wife had moved in and my kids had all moved in with my wife's sister and we were all living in that one bedroom. Wow. And, uh, <laughs> We ended up <clears throat> struggling a little bit more relationship wise through that with me being, you know, 2000 miles away and her being pregnant, living with her sister and all the kids crammed into one room. Mm. So I had no choice. I couldn't fail. It was just one of those things. Yeah. I ended up working for a uh, luxury automotive manufacturer, which is where I still work. Actually, I've been there going on six years now. Okay. And what do you do with them? Uh, Everything I've ran. (laughs) I've actually been a team lead in every department. So now I'm a utility hitter. I'm a utility hitter. I just, wherever they need me, I'll go and fill in. Okay. Okay. So I'm sorry. The, the, the thing froze for a little minute. Um, (laughs) Yeah. So, wow. So that's a, Well, wow, that's, that's, that's heavy, man. I mean, what was that, what was going on in your mind during that period, man? Because, uh, you know, you, you hear stories and stuff like this, but, um, it's not a position that certainly not with, you know, a family and a whole bunch of kids that a lot of people have been in. I mean, what was sort of going through, what was sort of going through your mind at the time, man? Well, I'll say I've come pretty close to uh, just ending it all. Wow. That's not something that I'm particularly proud of, but I'm not going to gloss over that. Uh, everybody kind of hits the lowest of the low points, and you don't really know where to go from there. Mm. And I got pretty close one night, but... I don't know, something said, you know what, my, my motto, and I don't, I don't want to swear on your podcast, but uh, my motto was don't be a, be a TCH. Yep. And so I just kept telling that to myself. And <laughs> man, dude, that's uh, man, that's, that's heavy. Like that's, that's heavy. You know, it's, it's always interesting. One thing I love about doing this podcast and having these conversations is just, uh, being able to, you know, really get people's, really get people's stories because on Twitter or social media or Instagram, whatever, right. You always kind of get the little snapshots and you can kind of see how people's minds works and you you can see where they are. You can kind of see where they are now and where things are going, but you don't really get that picture of, okay, what's been this person's life journey? Like why, why do they believe this? Why do they think this way? What motivates them? What drives them? all that kind of stuff. So whenever I have a guest on who I feel like I have little sort of snapshots of, I always like to, you know, really, really get into it and think, okay, what's, what has created the man that's here today? You know? Um, and I, I had no idea about a whole bunch of that stuff you just told me. Yeah. Well, you know, they say the wine tastes best where the grapes had to suffer. I've never heard that before, but I like it. It's actually true. Uh, the harsher the condition of the location that the vines are growing, the better the wine's going to be. Mm. So I think that's true of men. 
just people in general. Yeah. So what are some of the biggest lessons that you've learned throughout that period? I mean, if you could give advice to someone who's in a similar situation or, you know, kind of feels like, man, things are, the world is just crushing me or I'm, don't know what to do next. I mean, what sort of mindset shift did you go through that maybe you can advise someone with who may be listening and who kind of feels like they're in that position? Well, you can't tell people that it's going to work out because you don't know if it will or not. But I mean, if you're going to go down, you might as well go down swinging. So that was my plan. Mm. And I'm not just going to lay there and die. Um, Worst case scenario, excuse me, worst case scenario, it doesn't work out. But it's definitely not going to work out if you just lay there. (laughs) That's true. Don't you think it'll, I mean, I feel like with stuff like that, I mean, I think that it will work out eventually if you persist. I'm always a believer that, you know what, as long as you keep moving forwards, sometimes sometimes you might be moving slowly, but as long as you keep moving forwards, then eventually you'll get to where you're trying to get to. Yeah. I mean, and where you are actually trying to get to may not be the place you had originally thought you were trying to get to. It's true. You know, you may not end up in the place you had planned or hoped for, but I mean, hell up is up, whether you're up an inch or up a mile. True. So tell us a little bit about the grooming company that you founded. Well, uh, a while back I had gotten this idea that it would be a cool to have a hobby since I really didn't have any besides working. <laughs> so I, you know, I like men's grooming supplies. I like smelling good, looking good, feeling good mm-hmm. because if you don't believe that the way you look affects your attitude, put on a suit and look at how differently you stand and carry yourself. So i always going to all these different stores, finding different men's grooming products, but every single one of them either smelled like a 14 year old boy on prom night (laughs) or a flower. So so I started looking up. So I started looking up different recipes to just make my own and send it myself. And so I did that for just a little bit. And eventually I was like, you know, I can't be the only one that feels this way. So I called a buddy of mine. And I actually went to high school with him. He's living in Berlin right now. Okay. And uh, him, he and his wife own a branding uh, company. Uh, he, he's a graphic designer. She can build custom WordPress sites, and pretty much anything you need. Mm. And called him up. And I was like, hey, man, start my own company. Need a logo. You know, some branding work. And see what you can do for me. So, of course, he charged me full price like good friends do. and uh we got to work and uh that was yeah that was the beginning of january okay and then we threw some ideas back and forth i started a twitter page figuring i've never had a twitter before so we'll see what happens and i can get as much awareness as i can because facebook is just trash twitter's the best man it is. It really is. Twitter is the best. I don't know why everybody else doesn't realize this, but um, it is. Hey, more for us. Yeah, true, man. I mean, it's got what? I think Twitter has about 300 million users. Facebook has 2 billion. Instagram has 1 billion. And I'm like, man, you guys are missing out. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, we threw some company ideas around. Uh, I had a terrible, I'm not even going to mention it, but I, I will say the original name for the company was terrible. Oh, now you now you have to say it. <laughs> Legendary. Oh, it's nowhere near as bad as I was expecting. It's a bit, it's a bit, it's a bit obvious. Well, but. well, the full thing was going to be Legendary Man Grooming Company. Mm, a bit long. Like, yeah, a bit long. Well, I mean, Rugged Legacy Grooming Supply is not exactly short, but uh, the actual name Rugged Legacy has some meaning behind it. Okay. Uh, you know, I'm a big fan of, uh, like I said, looking good, smelling good, feeling good. Mm-hmm. And Tanner Guzzi, Ken, Tanner Guzzi had this thing on his website, masculine style, where you take this quiz and you figure out which archetype you best fit into as far as how you dress. Okay. Yeah. One of those archetypes was rugged. 
course I fit that. And then the legacy aspect is something that's always been important to me, having not had a father. And uh, even with a matter of a few weeks ago, I'm discovering family members I didn't know I had because after my father's death, I didn't really have any connection with his side of the family. Mm-hmm. And so building a legacy as uh, something that's always been important. And so it just kind of flowed together, rugged legacy. Okay. And what was the first product that you put out? Was it like a beard oil or? No, I launched like all gangsters. I launched 12 products at once. Oh, wow. Okay. All at the same time. I had three different uh, solid colognes, three different beard balms, three different mustache waxes and three different pomades. Wow. Okay. So this dude doesn't do things by half measures. (laughs) <laughs> go, go big or go home right yeah for real that's cool and so did you um what was the process for making the making the products well i didn't want anything that was loaded with chemicals yeah uh so i tried to go the all natural route which i'm still there you know there's nothing in you can eat every single product that i have i, I wouldn't recommend it <laughs> but i mean it's kind of you can if you want uh, I saw a video going viral on Twitter earlier today of a woman eating speed stick. Um, so yeah, maybe she'd be down for that, but no, I got, I got nothing. I got nothing to add to that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. But no, it was just basically me playing around with wholesale ingredients and then different essential oils coming up with scents in my kitchen, driving my wife wild because I was using all of her cutlery and using all of her pods and, yeah she was not a big fan of that Uh, that's understandable i guess yeah i I had to go buy my own she wouldn't let me play with hers anymore (laughs) that's fair enough man so yeah no so carry, carry on man yeah so i did that and i had i think march 10th of this year i decided all right i'm gonna go live with pre orders and uh see how this goes Well, all the pre-orders came in on the first week and it completely wiped me out of everything that I spent all that time making. So I had to find a manufacturer fast because I'm like, well, shit's going live in three weeks. (laughs) (laughs) I got to do something. So I ended up, you know, through a couple of different resources, found a manufacturer. Uh, We came to an agreement. They're manufacturing it and then I'm paying for it in a wholesale price. They send it to me. And then of course I, used my markup to cover my overhead and I was handling my own shipping. Mm -hmm. So that worked out for a few months and then the volume got out of hand. So I ended up having to hire a warehouse and third party logistics to handle all of my shipping. Okay. That's good. So now I just focus on the marketing aspect and any customer service issues because I can just call my, my uh, shipping department or the warehouse and handle any issues from there. And how do you go about marketing it? Well, I've been using Google ads, Facebook ads, and of course, just word of mouth, man, and Twitter. Mm -hmm. But I hate Facebook. I haven't used any of their ads in so long. And I know that's where a lot of money's at, and I need to get over that. Yeah, no, it's, it's, Facebook is, is getting very, it's so clunky now. It's just, there's just so much stuff. The site is really slow. There's just stuff everywhere. It's just not streamlined. It used to be so simple and clean and it's like they want to do everything now. They want to be Twitter and Instagram and YouTube and fit, you know, you know what I mean? It's like, and Snapchat. It's like, I'm just bombed. I just log in and it's just like, what is. Yeah. They don't have enough bandwidth to handle all that data. No, they really don't. I mean, I just, that's why I like Twitter. Cause it's just clean. It's simple. It does one thing. It's like, I don't want Twitter stories. I don't want 20 minute videos. I just want, Twitter and they've just stuck to that for the past 10 years and I'm happy that they have because it's just like clean it's like just don't me- don't mess with it just leave it it works yeah I mean I, I joined Twitter in January and I was like well this is what is this MySpace you know it's, <laughs> it's like 8-bit video <laughs> games or something there's, there's nothing going on here but yeah I like it yeah. Oh, there's, there's, like there's a lot going on there. Once, once you get behind it. Yeah. At first I felt like I was playing Oregon trail. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, man. I've been on Twitter since 2009. So I've been on it for over 10 years. So, uh, nice. but yeah, I kind of like the fact that it, I've been on Facebook even longer, 
but uh, Facebook has gone been through about 20 different iterations in that period. Whereas Twitter is just, you know, it's had some facelifts, but functionality wise, I remember when they added the likes, uh, the likes wasn't always there, but apart from that, it's this, it's the same old beast. So long live Twitter. Yeah. And I've heard the stories of when it was, uh, there was a less character allowance per tweet. Yeah. It used to just be 140. Okay. For most of the time, it only became 280 about, about a year and a half to two years ago. Hmm. Like 2017 or 2018 is when they, I think 2017 is when they expanded it. First of all, they just expanded it for certain, um, for certain users. So certain users, it was kind of like a privilege and then they uh, rolled it out to everybody else after a couple months. But yeah, it used to be, um, used to just be 140. Oh, that white privilege kicked in, I guess. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> you know, some, some, someone like that. Yeah. You know, sometimes, yeah. sometimes I identify as white and use my white privilege, but well, I identify as black, so we're good, dude. It's all equal opportunities where we're at, bro. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I, I, man, I live in the South and my wife is Hispanic and my kids are mixed. And so it's, it, there's just nothing but jokes going all around as it should be, man. Yeah. I mean, if you can't laugh at it, what good is it? Dude, the <clears throat> thing is with all this silly nonsense that certain people have created, it's... Um, the hyper PC culture. Dude, it's it's almost made for to be laughed at because it's, it's like South Park or something. It's just so... <laughs> some of it just gets so ridiculous that I, I'll see some stuff online and I'm, I'm thinking, I can't even tell if something is a parody or real anymore. Yeah, I mean, satire is dead. Yeah. <laughs> I read, I read a post. I'm like, I have to go on the person's account and I'm going through their tweets and trying to work out if it's like a real person or if it's just like a memester. And I'm, sometimes I'm just like, okay, no, that has to be a joke. That, that can't be serious. And then I go on there and they are dead <laughs> serious. You know, there was one the other day. I can't remember. It was a blue, it was a verified blue chick. I think it was like an actress or something. And she was there talking about um, how she was there apologizing for being white and talking about how awful it was to be born with such, like she, she was just this weird screed, and it was just like, what on earth are you talking about, woman? Like this, this is, this is so strange. Like what? Are you? The comments on it were amazing, though. I just love. Sometimes you just go straight to the comments, and you're just like, okay, <laughs> what are the gifts? Yeah, you know, and everyone tries to lump everyone into a different label. Oh, well, oh you're a you're a straight white male, so mm. you're obviously a racist and you're a homophobic. <laughs> by and by def by definition, <laughs> what, like, what you believe doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm like, my wife's not white, and one of my sons is gay, so I, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, they'll say that they'll say you're using that as um as cover. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's the, that's the crazy people say the wildest stuff and I'm just like what is wrong with you what what do you <laughs> but uh yeah like I said I think laugh, laughter is the best revenge like just ridicule I think is the best thing like people get angry at it all the time I think people just need to like ridicule it and use people's own logic against them to show them how silly the whole thing is um hopefully I'm hoping this is just sort of a temporary phase no. <laughs> and people will look back at this time and just be like, good grief. Like, what were we doing? Like, why was, why was everybody getting canceled? <laughs> why, why, why was everyone everybody, mad? Why was everyone mad? Why was everybody being like racist in the name of anti-racism? <laughs> like, well, was... <laughs> well, I think the whole thing didn't even start till like 2015. Mm. I think 2015 was like the year that everybody just got pissed off about everything. <laughs> And I, you know, and I didn't have a whole lot of online presence. I mean, I had a personal Facebook page with, with like 50 friends, yeah. you know, and why is everybody so mad? <laughs> what happened? I'm, I mean, I, I mean, I know I'm living in the backwoods, but I'm trying to figure out what happened that I didn't know about. I mean, do I need to be pissed too? Yeah, it is. It is weird. It is weird. And it's like some people get, some people seem to get off on, the anger and the division and the point scoring and just trying to dunk on people. And I'm just like, it's really weird. It's like children, you know, it's, it's really, sometimes you see some stuff and it's really childish. You're just like, man, can't you guys just phone? I'll see some interactions on Twitter. I'm like, why don't you guys just like call each other and have a talk? <laughs> you know, just like go out for coffee. And like, 
<laughs> well, I, I think I said on Twitter the other day, I said going back and forth on Twitter is, you know, little girl behavior, just meet up and fight or shut up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, just, it's so strange. I'm just like, just, especially when it's people who, kn- who know each other. It's like, you guys clearly know each other. I mean, I, I've had that before. I've had ones where, you know, I'll say something and someone who I know personally is there like replying to it and trying to like pick a little fight with me or whatever. I'm like, you've got my phone number. If you want to know, if you want to know like what I mean, or you don't, you genuinely don't understand what my intention was or whatever, like call me, you know me, like, let's, let's talk. Like, why is this here on display for a hundred thousand people to, <laughs> to sit and watch? It's like very strange. Uh, you know, having a house full of boys, you know, there's a lot of testosterone in my house. There's a lot. <laughs> and certain bedrooms in the house just smell horrible. <laughs> <laughs> They're just terrible because oh, teenagers live in them. Yeah. But, um, you know, actually it just encouraged the violence. I'm like, you know what? Just go outside, beat the crap out of each other and come back. <laughs> and, oh, well, that's dumb. Well, so is arguing over who looked at who. <laughs> Like, just go fight. Like, I don't care. I mean, there can be only one. Just go Highlander. But <laughs> what happens? What's it been like raising eight sons? <sighs> Terrifying, exhausting, and a very amusing. Mm. You know, because they're all extremely different. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I've got a computer whiz, a guy who thinks he's God's gift to women. I've got one who is very quiet and reserved and artistically talented uh one who is like just incredibly into fitness okay you know he's in there right now just cranking the iron yeah and then i've got one and i you know what they can get mad if you want he's gay and he's also the drama queen of the house <laughs> okay yeah. but again like i told hunter drew I, you know i don't care what he puts in his mouth as long as it's not meth <laughs> I don't even know. It's fun to that. It's, yeah, coming, I just, it's coming from his dad, so yeah, I, I, I don't care, <laughs> you know. But um, and, oh, by the way, you wouldn't believe how much flack I get for that. For what? You're cool. You're you're okay with your son being gay? What am I gonna do? I was going to say, what are you supposed to do about it? There, there was like a program in Texas at one point where you could pray the gay away, but I don't think it worked. <laughs> I, ha- I have heard of that. Um, you know, I, I'm a, I am a believer in God, but I don't think that's a, uh, I'm not sure those have been proven to work. Uh, you know what? <laughs> I, I've never heard a success story. I've never, <laughs> I've certainly never, never heard of, heard of. There's going to be an ass scene on TV ad. I used to be. <laughs> yeah. It seems about as likely as to turn a straight guy gay. Like that's not really gonna. <laughs> yeah, not really I mean, gonna, you know, it's just that's not gonna work, is it? <clears throat> but no, and then the other ones haven't really came into their personalities yet. Uh, the one right below him is uh, just turned thirteen two days ago. Okay. And he's really into magic, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's always walking around pulling cards out of his ass and things. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to make coffee. Don't do that. <laughs> and then, of course, you've got the. And then, is it after him? Is it your daughter? And then the youngest. No, no. A- after him, it's one more boy. Okay. And, and then my daughter, and okay. then my youngest, who I'm not ashamed to say is my favorite. <laughs> Why is he your favorite? Because he's the youngest, or yeah, pretty yes. much. Hasn't had, a cha- the, hasn't had a chance to annoy you yet. He's the youngest, and I've already done all the indoctrinating i can do so he's just going to be on my side that's fair enough man but yeah i mean that's dude that's uh res- respect for that because that's uh that's a, that's a heck of a feat you know what i mean i don't have any kids yet but you know i've seen people who have just the one kid yeah, or love. i'm just kidding I don't, I, don't, I don't have any kids <laughs> <I know that. laughs> um and, or the ones that have got you know just two and they make it seem like just having one kid is sort of the Oh world. yeah, I always laugh if I see someone with one kid say they're tired. Yeah, <laughs> like they've got one more than I do, so I can't really say anything. But I'm saying, from your perspective, that must be like, mm. okay. Tell me more about. Uh, I imagine I can. I can't. I can't even begin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what's been what's been the biggest challenge with it, though? Honestly, finding time to spend time with all of them individually. 
Um, we just took a trip to the mountains, me and three of them okay. uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, it was incredible. We did a, I think it was like a six mile hike, hung out at some waterfalls and just chilled in the river, man. It was a lot of fun. Mm. But finding time to spend with them on an individual level, especially my daughter, you know, I like to take her on the daddy daughter dates. We usually go in like paint pottery or things like that. Nice. And how old but, is she? Uh, she's six. She's six. Okay. Yeah. Getting ready to be seven, but she yeah. thinks she's 36. <laughs> Was it was it a trip having a daughter after seven sons? Oh man, it blew my mind. Like I remember, we went. My wife and I went and had one of those uh, 4D ultrasounds, mm -hmm. and they go, "Well, you're you're having a girl," and I've got no idea what to do. <laughs> <laughs> we we have seven boys, and here comes a girl. I've got no clue. Yeah, but. And it changes your whole perspective about everything. You're like, well, I have to wear pants and, you know, I. <laughs> <laughs> this, you know, behaviors just have to change. Yeah. But no, man, it's, it, it's been a blast. I love having my daughter. Yeah. You know? do you, She's my do little you, princess. Do you feel like you, you, you treat her differently or. I mean, if she gets hurt. Yeah. Yeah. But if it's my boys, you know, they come to me, oh, dad, I'm bleeding. Is it arterial bleeding? <laughs> no, go play. You know, my daughter comes in, dad, I scraped my knee. I'm screaming, call 911. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be that way when she was little. And yeah, yeah. now she's climbing these trees over here and jumping out of them. And she'll come in covered in mud. Yeah. No, it's yep. funny. I, it's one of those just nat natural. <laughs> it's what happens when you have a whole lot of testosterone to influence your behavior. Yeah, definitely. It's funny because it's one of those just natural behaviors, right? Where people kind of say that men and women should be treated the same or that boys and girls should be treated the same. And in, it's true in one sense, but in another sense, you know, I don't think the average woman would like it if men treated her like they like men treat and talk to other men. It's like, a, it's like, I don't think you did. I don't think you genuinely actually want that. Um, Absolutely not. <laughs> it's, it's, it's something people say, but you're kind of like, mm, I kind of get what you mean, but not really. I know what you're getting at, but you're wrong. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think also the same with um, Like I've got nine nieces and nephews. So I've got, um, Five I didn't nieces. know. I didn't know we were related. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I've got uh, five nieces and four nephews, and um, yeah, you know, even even with them, you do find the way I treat my nephews is you know it's a little bit a little bit different from the way I treat my nieces, and even like you said, you know, if they get if if they get hurt, the response can be a little bit a little bit different. Just because, well, but. It, it all makes sense when you really think about it, though, because obviously, as you, as they grow and develop into teenagers and eventually adults, you you know, we in the real world all know that the sort of expectations and demands and whatnot of men and women are you know there's a big overlap, but they are they are different. So oh yeah yeah just like I don't know if a girl sees a sees a mouse or a spider and screams and runs for help that's kind of accepted acceptable by society <laughs> whereas if a, if a guy sees a mouse and sort of screams and runs people are like oh what's up with that dude like that's not yeah that's not mice bad. snakes i'm good with all those don't yeah. don't come near me with a spider oh no spiders nah the kryptonite yep i'll okay. set you and the house on fire <laughs> And, uh, and I saw I saw a giant spider crawl under my house the other day. I'm like, well, time to burn the house down. <laughs> take, take it all out. <laughs> take everything out. Everything. The whole, the whole state. Yeah. But no, there is a vast difference on how you can treat people and how people treat each other. I mean, just look at, uh, you know, if you and I were sitting in a bar somewhere hanging out and we've known each other for a while, you're going to bust my balls and I'm going to bust your balls. You know, I'm going to see you and be like, oh, you old bald-headed moron, <laughs> you know, whatever, yeah. you know, 
like, geez, what'd you do? Get pregnant? You know, cause I'll see you. Oh, your abs are disappearing. I guess you got knocked up. You know, just whatever. We're going to break each other's balls. Yeah, yeah. But if you ever hear a woman be like, Janice, I've missed you. You've gained a whole lot of weight, ain't you? <laughs> yeah. That's not going to work out well. They're going to fight. Yeah, yeah. You know, men, we, you know, you've had, you're in a relationship. You've gotten, you know, a crap test from your old lady. Of course. Where she's going to do something or say something just to see how you react. But see, guys do that to each other all the time. Mm. That's all we do is we just bust each other's chops. Yeah, man. But you can't bust your, your wife's chops like you do your buddies. No, no, no. They'll, they'll, you can't pick on your daughter. You can't pick on your daughter the way you do your son. No, that's true. Yeah. If I tell my daughter she throws like a girl, she's like, duh. <laughs> yeah. <You know, laughs> You know, I tell my son, you know, you throw like a girl and he's like, <clears throat> gets all mad. I'm like, well, throw better, <laughs> you know, but you know, I think it's cool. Like you can see how differently they act as they're growing up. And of course I expect my daughter to be able to throw a punch too. Cause you know, restraining order is only a piece of paper. Mm. So I want her to be able to knock some dude around. Shouldn't it, you know, the need arise. <laughs> Just, just beat him up, hold him down till we get there and we'll handle it. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, you know, my four year old, everything at a four year old's height is basically going to take his skull out. Mm. And so he took a shot to the head on the dinner table a few weeks ago, oh. busted his, busted his lip. And I'm like, you all right? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. I'm tough. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay. There we go. He's got, he's got blood running down his chin. I'm like, wow. My little animal. I love it. <laughs> but if it was my daughter, she's going to be curled up next to me crying the entire time. I got to pat her. It's okay. Uh, yeah. You know, destroy her if I tell her to go toughen up. <laughs> yeah. What's interesting with, uh, with little kids is, is the way that they often wait to see how um, their parents or other adults react before they decide how they should react. So if you kind of show tons of concern and you show that something's happened, then that's, that's the point sometimes where they start crying. Or if you're just kind of like, okay, yeah, everything's fine. And then they'll kind of look around and be like, okay, maybe I shouldn't, maybe it wasn't that serious. It's like you determine how serious it is sometimes. Yeah. I mean, I've seen people take their own ankle out with a sledgehammer and I don't really react to it. So my kid could chop his foot off and just, you all right. You need another? You got another one. See the big deal. <laughs> and what's the uh what's been the so how do you and your wife sort of juggle it what's the dynamic well we kind of handle everything kind of evenly she'll she's pretty you know a very traditional woman she'll well see what your dad says well, we'll see what your dad says and, and I, you know I, I guess just the way she was raised the way i was raised so we don't make any big decisions without each other consulting each other, you know, just out of respect for each other. But, uh, generally she's a stay at home mom. So she handles all of it while I'm out bringing home the bacon mm -hmm. and uh, she's a badass to doing it too. I'm not even going to lie. She's a saint. Yeah. She puts up with me <laughs> and nine children on top of it. And she birthed all of them naturally. Yeah. So amazing. yeah, she's actually a superhero for real man for real I should like, kick uh, your butt <laughs> hopefully it won't come to that well um, as long as you're well she's all, she's not gonna fight you until you start identifying as a woman again oh but, well you know it's, it's what's today friday no not i don't do that on fridays oh well see you're good i'm not i'm, I'm actually gender fluid that's the thing like not everybody, uh, not everybody gets so it's not like a constant thing you know just depending on the time of day mood activity hormonal levels, all that kind of stuff. It affects my gender. I got you. You took a picture, felt cute, might delete later. <laughs> <laughs> a little duck face. <laughs> I, should actually, no, uh, I should actually create um, a, a separate Instagram for when I change my... Uh, yes. Uh, oh, that, that could be the one. Yeah, you got to do that. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, have, I'll have like the two personas. And see, that's something I need to work on is my Instagram. Because I'm like, why would anybody want a picture of that? You know, and you know, we live in a, in a society today where everybody's filming everything. And my last thought is to let me get my phone. Mm. 
I'm always like, oh, I should have got my phone 20 minutes ago and took a picture of that. Yeah. You know what? I, do you know one of my predictions for the future? Get this. I think in the future, everybody is going to have like a very, very tiny drone that just follows them around all day and just takes photos and records them and just constantly is uploading stuff online. Like I think you'll have, it might not even be visible. It'll be like a, it'll, it'll be like a fly or a mosquito, but it'll like have a, a nanobot. Yeah. It'll have an HD camera. It'll just, it'll just follow you around, you know? And it'll just be, it'll be here next to me right now as I'm doing this podcast with you. It'll be taking photos of me or videos and uploading clips to social media, sharing it out, maybe streaming, all that. And everyone's just going to have this little thing. Um, and you, it'll just, it'll start out weird. It'll start out just a couple of people will have it. And then over time, like a smartphone, over time, it'll just be like, oh, what you don't have, you don't have this nano drone. And you'll be, you'll be like the, the weirdo for not having one. That's, that's one of my predictions for the future. Yeah, I'm just really hoping it's selective in what it uploads if it's following you around all day. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, I don't want to see your morning routine. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I do think that'll be, uh, I don't know, I like to think about the future and I just think it's uh, in, the, in the 30 and a bit years I've been around, it's, it's insane just how much stuff has progressed in terms of technology. And so another 30 years from now or even 20 years from now, it's, um, it's pretty wild to think. I mean, there's so many things that are completely ubiquitous and which are just a constant part of our lives that literally did not exist 12 or 15 years ago. And now... Well, yeah, I mean, everything is completely interconnected where, you know, I mean, you're in London, right? Mm -hmm. well, and here I am, right. well, nearby London, and here I am in South Carolina, and we're having a conversation. You couldn't do that no. at, without charging and, you know, be, having to be jacking up your phone bill back mm -hmm. when you had the long curly cord sticking out of the wall that my kids can't believe exist for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. In, in real time. And then you got the ability to, for free, you got the ability to share it with potentially millions or billions of other people. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's wild. I mean, I can type in, you know, 280 characters and look at I'm like, wow, 3.5 million people saw it this month. It's nuts. You know, it, it's crazy. Yeah, it's, it is. It's like magic. It is like magic. So I'm both excited and terrified to see where it all goes. Yeah. And you know, and for the longest time, I always had this kind of an assumption of we peaked technologically once the computer became something you could own in the home. And all we've done, we haven't created anything new, all well, that we know of. But all we've done is refine and improve on what was already there. Mm. You know, that 8-bit PC when you were playing Oregon Trail, learning you died of dysentery, is now in the palm of your hand with HD 4K graphics and mm -hmm. interconnectivity to anywhere in the world as long as there's a satellite that can pick it up. But we haven't crossed any other thresholds yet. Mm. And... My prediction is that we're going to, and I believe we already are, is work on human augmentation. Yep, yep, yep. Um, if you haven't read it or purchased it, I will say you should probably read Sanction by Roman McClay. And I know you've seen it everywhere on Twitter. Uh, no, I haven't actually. You haven't? No. Okay, sanctionthebook.com. Go there. Yeah. Okay. And volume one is about 400,000 words and 800 pages. But if you read it, you'll never, you'll never be the same. Oh, gosh. You'll, you'll never be the same after reading the first 20 pages. And you say this is just one volume? One volume. Volume oh, two and three are, com are both coming out. Oh, boy. I, but, I'll, I'll have to get to this eventually. It might not be for, might not be for a year or two. <laughs> I've, I've already yeah. got like 10 books in my reading list that I already own and haven't yet read. I'm currently reading the entire Bible, so that's taken a while. Okay, um, yeah, I've done that. Yeah, I've uh, I should have done that, but I actually haven't. I've read I've read most of it in bits, but not properly in its entirety. So uh, yeah, beginning I, to end. Yeah, I'm, do, I'm doing I'm doing that this year. Um, but yeah, man, I'm just uh, I'm just having to, having to look at the time. We're approaching approaching an hour. Um, what have you got coming up this year or in the near future? Any projects or products that you're working on that you're excited about? Well, uh, we're looking at expanding 
uh, the unemployables to uh, hopefully as many members as we can possibly get. Uh, try to increase the value there. Try to get on some full-time members that are entrepreneurs that will act as coaches. Okay. Um, kind of hashing out a few different uh, product ideas for release of the, around the beginning of the year for Rugged Legacy. Mm -hmm. I'm working on a, uh, a beard wash, a beard conditioner, and keep throwing around, uh, around the idea of a women's line. But I'm not sure if I want to go that route yet. Mm. If you and, do a women's line, do you think it would be under the same name or would you maybe have like a sub brand? Because Rugged Legacy might sound a little too masculine. It might be. Um, and if you're into masculine women, that's fine. But, <laughs> but uh, not for, I'm not, not for like you personally, but you know, everyone likes different things. Yeah. But uh, same here. <laughs> but um, I don't know. I'm still kind of throwing the idea around. Probably going to go with a sub brand mm. or something, something by Rugged Legacy. Okay, maybe. I got you. <clears throat> but uh, that and I am finally working on a novel. Ah, okay. Tell us a little more about that. Well, I've always wanted to be a writer and to be a writer, you have to write. And I've always been that guy that just sat there at the screen going, I have no idea what I'm doing. Yep. And I have no idea what to say. And then I hooked up with this guy, uh, Adam Lane Smith, who wrote the burrito Avenger. You've probably seen that. That does ring a bell. Yeah. And, uh, Adam and I are good friends and he, he writes like a book every 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, he gave me some tips on writing and turns out you have to write the whole book before you even make it good. You know, you write the whole book and then you go back and refine it, which yeah. I just thought it had to be perfect the first time around. And so I'm going through that now and I'm hoping to have it completed by the end of this year. Okay, cool. So you've got the whole storyline laid out, I take it. Yep, laid out the outline, and I am maybe 20,000 words into it right now. Okay. Can you give us any sort of preview or tidbits about what it may be about? Well, yeah, there, it's, uh, it takes place in a fictional town called Banner, Wyoming. Uh, and there's a sheriff's deputy there, a little one-horse town. we got a sheriff and a sheriff's deputy. And some things go down where the sheriff's deputy's wife gets murdered. Mm -hmm. and his son kidnapped and he goes on this uh revenge and rage fueled i guess quest you could call it mm -hmm. to figure out who killed his wife why they would have killed his wife and to get his son back so it's okay the, the cool part and the fun part is choreographing all the gunfights choreographing so, them oh like in written form yep okay because you have to have it all kind of play out. You write down what's going on in the scene, mm -hmm. and then you have to write the scene, add in your dialogue and all these different little aspects of it, and then try to make it not sound cheesy. <laughs> yeah, no, I've I've never um, I've never I don't know if I'd be able to write a novel. I can obviously write songs. I can write nonfiction, but um, yeah, no, novel writing is not something I think I have a innate talent nor 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 interest i guess really in um but i'm always i'm always impressed by anyone who can do anything that i don't think that i can or that i haven't done i'm always just super duper intrigued because it's like everyone's everyone's just got certain abilities or talents or th things that they can do that are really hard to describe the process of you know as, as a rapper a lot of people are like oh how do you write how do you write your songs? And it's hard to explain because it's not really, it's not like a formula and a bunch of steps that I go through. It's just like stuff. I get in the zone and stuff kind of, stuff kind of comes to me. So when I see people who, you know, write novels or TV series or films or stuff like that, I'm just like, man, how did you even conceive this whole storyline and all these interlinking characters and that twist and, this thing there, especially when it's something that's, um, especially when it's like a multi-part series. And I'm just like, geez, how did you, how did they plan this whole thing? Sometimes they have to think years ahead and think, okay, that's going to happen. And then that'll happen in the future. And yeah, that, that, that's the stuff that really blows my mind. 
Yeah, and like I said, Adam writes a book a minute, <clears throat> and he has had this entire series that he's working. It's Christian fiction, which you may enjoy. It's masculine Christian fiction. It's a Dust Vault Wastelander series. Is that still allowed? I don't really think he cares. <laughs> 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 but uh he's written i think three or four already oh wow within the past two months in the past and two months wow yes okay in the past two months and they're all i think two of them have the same character as the main protagonist and then the other the others don't mm. but they're all operating within the same universe kind of like how marvel has their set up but uh speaking of your songs i'm not gonna lie this one is great glory oh glory oh thanks man yes thank you <laughs> i dig it that is one of my favorites i dig it thank you but, thank you but yeah man it, i'm usually throwing that on when i'm trying to get jazzed up about going to work at nine to five <laughs> <laughs> cool, man. Any, anything that motivates people if my music can inspire or motivate anybody then that's literally that makes that makes me feel blessed man you know to know i can create something from there that people around the world are listening to and enjoying and hopefully taking some kind of positivity from man that's literally why i why i do what i do but yeah and it's it's a great feeling that's kind of why i uh, you know i feel the way about rugged legacy is people go, oh you sell hair products or cologne or beard products I'm like, no I, if you look good and I'm, I'm not just selling a tin of beard balm or a little tin of cologne i'm yeah. selling someone their confidence that they know they look the best they can possibly look when they walk into that room to get that job or ask that girl on a date or when they're standing there in front of the mirror and they're teaching their two and three and four year old son how to fix their hair. So they look nice. Mm. You know, I'm selling those moments to people. Not, I mean, yeah, it's a $14 thing of pomade or cologne or whatever, but I didn't have those memories of my dad shaving in the mirror and teaching me how to do it or how to fix my hair or prepare myself to look my best for the day. Mm. And those little moments, if my product can be a part of that or even facilitate that, I'm all for it, man. That's dope, man. And that sounds like a very good place to, uh, to close off. Why don't you let people know where they can find you and also find your stuff on, um, also find your company online. All right. Well, you can find me on Twitter. It is, at rugged underscore legacy the official twitter page is at rugged legacy underscore uh you can find me on instagram at rugged legacy grooming uh rugged legacy grooming.com is the website mm -hmm. and you can check out the unemployables uh, at uh unemployables.co or the unemployed the unemployables.co if you want to join you can use the promo code break B R E A K nine five or break the nine to five and you'll get a nice little deal on that. Awesome. Jeff Putnam. Thank you so much for coming on the real talk with Zuby podcast. It's been great to speak to you, man. Hey man. I loved every second. Awesome. Take care.